Good morning! We are still in Edinburgh. And the picture's kind of grainy. We're probably going to shift backgrounds and lightings quite a lot in the next week while I figure out how I should actually do this. But anyway, I'm Rebecca Farm, this is Ryan with Rebecca, and today, conceptual hydrohegemony. What? So we went over the original and slightly revised framework of hydrohegemony, looking at power and resource control in international river basins uh, and like transboundary shared water resources by Zaytun and Warner, and then tweaked by Cascal and Zaytun. And then I talked yesterday about virtual hydrohegemony, looking at hegemony and power in virtual water flows uh, and, and trade between countries around the water embedded in goods. Today, I want to talk about a little bit of a more meta concept, if you will, conceptual hydrohegemony, which is ideas of power and hegemony uh, and domination and control over water itself and of water itself. Uh, and when I say water itself, I don't mean so much like the actual water resources, but how we understand and interpret and know water and what we assume water is. So this is really, really tied to that third pillar of power, that third dimension, that ideational power. Uh, the ability to influence and shape core assumptions and perceptions of the world and discourses and narratives and really you know, influence what people think of and see as the status quo and why the status quo makes sense and all that kind of thing. So conceptual hydrohegemony is, okay, I completely just made this term up. Okay, so this is still my thesis. Um, but is a way to kind of identify when certain kinds of water or certain understandings of water become authoritative or domination, uh, dominative, domineering? Sure, we'll go with domineering, I don't know. Dominant, dominant, um, in scholarship, research, policy, everyday discussion and that kind of thing. And this influences the kind of power that we seek to have over water. So, for example, um, blue water, um, the water in lakes and rivers and streams that we see and that flows very obviously, is a conceptual hydrohegemon, particularly in regards to things like green water, the soil moisture, or virtual water, that water embedded in products. When we talk about water, we tend to assume, you know, blue water is kind of, you know, the default that we think that we're talking about. Uh, and there's way more international law, way more faculty, way more science and hydrology, way more government funding, way more ministries of, you know, water and sanitation, those kind of things. Like, just way more... Uh, resources dedicated to understanding and dealing with and knowing blue water, even though actually <laughs> green water and virtual water and other kinds of water are just as big a deal, just as important, just as necessary to really grapple with if we're truly going to figure out water security and sustainability and you know abilities to consume, etc, etc. So that's important to bear in mind because it really shapes how we're able to move forward with things. You know, when the conversation is only ever around this minuscule amount of water and so often we completely forget, uh, you know, to bring seawater, desalination, aquaculture, groundwater, soil water, blah, 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 into the picture, that's really hurting the kind of scholarship and knowledge that we're producing. And of course, that's then the policies that are agreed upon and enacted and that kind of thing. So this conceptual hegemony is in some ways harder to see because it's so ingrained and that makes it all the more dangerous, I would argue. Um, and it's something that I'm kind of also guilty of, as I point out in my thesis. So I say um, in virtual water, agriculture and food have, a cons like the food water has a conceptual hegemony over manufactured goods and services. And yet in my thesis, all three of my case studies do with agriculture because that's my expertise and because that's the information that's available. So it really bleeds into absolutely everything and shapes the conversation that we're even able to think about having. But if we really want to push against hegemony, we have to get at the really core foundations of things too. <laughs> 